Hi guys, welcome back to Programming with Kotlin and Android. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to build out our UI and we're going to build out our splash screen activity. I've taken it upon myself to bring in some of the icons for this application. We have an arrow down, we have an arrow up, we have a Bitcoin icon, we have an X or a cross, and we have a cog for our settings menu. I've also created the settings menu. This is just basically a menu item. I created this menu folder and then I created a XML file called menu home. And inside of it, we just have an item with an ID of action settings with a title of settings. And then it points towards our settings icon. And this is all it is, this thing in the corner here. Also, we have this part that says show as action and the action is if room. So that's something to keep in mind, though it's not really that important for this portion of the tutorial because we won't really be dealing with it until we start making our main activity. Another thing that I went ahead and did is add a bunch of different strings into the application. For instance, error messages, text for our menus, text for our labels. All this stuff will be on GitHub, so if you want to look at it more in depth later on, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so let's look at the composition of our UI elements. Now, before we really do this, keep in mind these are going to be fairly complicated. We're not really going to have the time to go over each individual piece. So I'll just go over the gist of each of these. So the first one is our main activity, and this is just the main screen for our activity. We use a constraint layout for the entire box. This is surrounding everything inside of this. It has a title on the top. We have this include block, and this allows us to include another partial, which is this piece here. And we'll look at that in a second. Then we have a swipe refresh layout, which allows us to pull down on the top of the screen to refresh our application. Now, of course, that functionality isn't in our application yet. Then we have this recycler view, which is the list. And the recycler view also references another layout. And that layout basically creates the template for the items that will be inside of the recycler view. You can see here that the actual list item is called layout coin item. The coin layout view, so this is the view that is actually going to make up our recycler view, is a lot more complicated. So you can see here that there are quite a few elements inside of it. We start out with a card view, and that is going to wrap this entire thing. And then inside of it, we have a constraint layout. And then we have two guidelines. And these are not visual elements. They are just elements that we use to guide where we want our other elements to sit. Nonetheless, we do give these each their own ID, vert guide start and vert guide end. Then we have our first text view, which is just the date, and it's the current date, 8 February 2018. And this is just called TV last update. Then we have another text view that has the name of the coin that we're looking at. This one by default is Bitcoin, but we'll have multiple different coins, so it will change. Then we have another text view that has the Bitcoin code inside of it. So BTC is the Bitcoin code. And again, this will change based on the coin that we're bringing in from the coin market cap API. So if we bring in Ethereum, this big piece will say Ethereum, and then this smaller piece will say ETH. We then have the price, and this will give the actual price in USD of the coin that we've brought in. Then we have a linear layout, and this covers the next three values, which is two text views and an image view. And this is for our 24 hour percentage change. So even though this says LL weekly, it should say LL daily, but it's not a big deal. The text view is TV label daily. And then we have TV stats daily. And then we have the IV indicator daily. So the way this will work is the black text will not change. The white text will change based on what we bring in from the API. And then the arrow will point up or down based on whether or not the percentage is positive or negative. And we'll do the same for our weekly, which is this seven days, 24% in the error up. So it's another linear layout with two text views and an image view inside of it. And then we have our one hour percentage, which is again, a linear layout with two text views and an image view inside of it. When the user taps on one of our recycler views, it expands out into something quite a bit bigger. This is what we want it to look like. We have all the elements that we had on our original coin item, and then we have a bunch of other items. This is a constraint layout that's surrounding the entire thing. And then we have our two guidelines. And then we have a text view for our date, 
a text view for the name of the coin and a text view for the code, text view for the price, and then linear layouts for each of these. Then below we have a view, so just a vanilla view, and this we're just using as a separator line. And then we have text views for each of our labels and each of the elements that we're bringing in from the API. So we have our 24 hour USD, market cap USD, available supply, total supply, max supply, price IDR, 24 volume IDR, and market cap IDR, as well as their respective values. The parts that we're going to be changing are going to be the parts on the right and the parts that are in white on the top, aside from the large piece that says Bitcoin. We have a dialog box that we're going to use so that the user can set up their settings to enable auto refreshing. It's mainly just a feature that the user can use at their own convenience. So this is a relative layout that surrounds everything. And then we have a card view that surrounds the actual box and everything else is inside of a linear layout. Then we have a text view that says settings on it. And then we have a constraint layout, which has a text view that says auto refresh. And we can pass a string into this, which will go inside those parentheses. And then we have a switch that will allow the user to either pick true or false. And this is automatically not checked. We also have a button that says save on it. So when the user clicks the save button, it will save the result of whether or not they want to have auto refresh turned on or off. We have another dialog box. This is used so that the user can exit the application cleanly. So we have a text view that asks the user if they want to exit. And then we have two buttons, one that says yes, and the other one that says no. And all of this is inside of a relative layout, which has a card view inside of it, and then a constraint view inside of that. Next, we have our splash screen. And this is fairly basic. We just have a constraint layout. And then we have a text view, which has coin tracker, which is the name of the application. And then we have an image view, which has the Bitcoin icon inside of it. And then we have a guideline at the bottom. Also, we're pointing this towards UI splash splash activity, which is the activity that we're going to create. But of course, right now that doesn't exist, so it's throwing an error. All right, so now let's create our splash activity, and we'll start by creating an interface called splash view. This will go inside of a directory called UI that will have home and splash inside of it, and then it will go inside the splash directory. All we want is for splash view to define two specific functions. One of them is called navigate to home and the other one is called show internet error. Now we want to create our splash presenter class. This again is inside of UI and splash. Inside of the primary constructor we want to pass in our splash view and our network utilities and then we want to create a function that will check to see if the network is connected or not. So we just call when and then we call on our network utils dot connected which if you remember checks to see if we're connected to Wi-Fi or mobile or not connected to anything. And if this comes back as connected, then we call splash view navigate to home, which moves on to the home activity. Otherwise we call splash view show internet error. Now we need to create another class inside of the splash folder called splash activity. And this will of course will be the splash activity main class. We want our splash activity class to extend our basic activity and then the splash view interface that we created just a moment ago. We want to create two properties for this class. One of them is an injected late init variable called network utils that of course is bringing in our network utils. And then we have a private val splash presenter, which is a lazy value, which instantiates the splash presenter that we created before. And we're passing in this splash activity and the network utils through this splash presenter. Now before we continue, we want to go into our dependency injector component and create another injection function specifically for our splash activity. So it's just fun inject and then we put our splash activity in here rather than our main activity. Going back into our splash activity, we now have the init injection function that is in our base activity. And inside of this function, we are creating an application. We're casting it as our main activity. And then we're calling crypto depths and then the injection function and we're passing in the splash activity. This is basically allowing us to inject our splash activity into our main activity so that when we switch activities between our splash activity and our home activity, they will automatically be injected into our main activity. So it will be sort of a seamless transition from one to the other. And then all of these activities will have access to all of the presenters that they need that are being injected into the main activity. 
We have a few other functions that we need to implement to make this splash activity work properly. First of which is navigate to home, then we have show internet error, then we have setup layout and on view ready. Our navigate to home function will create a handler. A handler is essentially a runnable object that allows us to send a message into a thread. So what we'll do is we'll queue up on the thread a movement from the splash activity to the home activity. So we'll say handler post delayed. And then inside of here we'll have a start activity with home activity inside of it. So this will start up the home activity and then we will reference this, which is the splash activities context, and then we'll finish the splash activity itself. And of course we want this to be delayed. So we put in 3000 milliseconds, which is just three seconds. The navigate to home function will not move on to the start function until it has actually been fully loaded and everything. For our show internet error function, we'll call our root splash, which is the root of our splash screen UI layout. And then we'll call the show snack bar method on it. We'll pass in one of our strings for error no internet. This string just says no internet connection. And then we'll pass in the time length that we want this snack bar to appear for. And we just want this snack bar to exist indefinitely. And then we'll allow the user to dismiss this snack bar by calling this dot dismiss. And when they dismiss the snack bar, we call act.recreate, which recreates the entire splash screen activity. So it basically will reload the entire application. Essentially, this snack bar is just going to pop up if we do not have internet, and it'll make it so that we do not continue on to the home activity. Inside of our setup layout function, we just want to set the content view to our splash layout file. And then when the view is actually ready, we want to call our splash presenter check requirement function, which will check to see if the user has internet. So to fix the error that we were having here, because we didn't have a home activity, we just want to create a home activity and we'll have it just extend our base activity. And because it extends the base activity, we need to bring in the three functions in it, injection, setup layout, and on ready view. And we don't need to necessarily implement these functions. We just need to bring them in. And once we do that, you'll see that the home activity will get resolved. And then start activity, we need to bring in from Onco. Now we can actually compile this application, though I guarantee it will crash when it tries to access the home activity. You can see here, we have our splash screen and then things crash. And I can click open again and it will open up the splash screen and then after three seconds it will crash. And this is because we have no home activity. If we put our emulator in airplane mode and we open up the application again, you'll see that the splash screen will stay open indefinitely. And we also get our snack bar at the bottom of the screen and it says no internet connection. And then we have a button that says check. We can click this and it will reload the application and try to see if we have internet. So this will also not go forward to the home activity, which means that it won't crash as well. In the next tutorial, we'll actually build out our home activity and we'll finish our application. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.